Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today, either in person or through live streaming on the internet. My name is Lisa Kloppenberg, and I serve as interim provost, soon to be Provost Kloppenberg. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to this year's State of the University Address. Before we begin today, we pause to acknowledge that Santa Clara University sits on the land of the Ohlone and Muwekma Ohlone people, who trace their ancestry through the missions Dolores, Santa Clara, and San Jose. We remember their connection to this region and give thanks for the opportunity to live, work, learn, and pray on their traditional homeland. Let us take a moment of silence to pay respect to their elders and to all Ohlone people past and present. To begin our program, a person I greatly admire for her devotion to our mission and to our students, Sally Vance Trembath, Senior Lecturer in Religious Studies, will open with a prayer. Creator God, the Living One, already in our midst and yet to come, your presence delights us even now as we call upon you to attend the particular cares we shall ponder today. With you, O oh God, there is no partiality, and yet you assure us that the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. So we humbly come before you with the deep knowledge that we belong to you. Your intentions for creation and for all creatures in it shape the work of this university. Father O'Brien has asked us to tilt everything we do toward generous encounters, encounters characterized by listening and learning. Any and all encounters flow from your own generous encounter with us as our brother, Jesus. The life of Jesus blew like a fresh, strong wind that turns a soft fire into a blaze. Open our hearts to the spirit that Jesus breathes on us. Deepen our capacity to draw, draw upon your robust, abundant presence as we do the work that transforms ideas into wisdom and crafts the mundane into the beautiful. We ask this in, with, and through your own spirit of truth and beauty, amen. Thank you, Sally. It's my pleasure now to introduce the Santa Clara University Chamber Singers under the direction of Dr. Scott Hannah Weir. They will perform the Ute Sundance it was transcribed and reworked from the traditional ute by Valerie Naranjo and arranged by Ethan Sperry for choir. The Ute Sundance is a song of renewal sung by the Ute tribe at the beginning of the new year and is one of the Ute's most important rites of passage. Debts, misunderstandings, and grudges are forgiven so that no one needs to start the new year with old negativity. And now our chamber singers.
Thank you. That was a beautiful and inspiring performance. One of Santa Clara's annual traditions is to come together for the State of the University Address. It provides a unique occasion for us to gather as a university community of students, faculty, and staff to reflect on the first half of the year and to look forward to the opportunities that lie ahead. We will hear today, first, from the President of the Associated Student Government of Santa Clara University, and then from our University President. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sahil Sager, President of the Associated Student Government. Originally from Pleasanton, California, Sahil is a senior economics major with a minor in entrepreneurship. Please join me in welcoming Sahil. Thank you, Lisa, for that great introduction, and thank you to my fellow peers for that wonderful song. Good afternoon to those of you here in attendance and those watching online. My name is Sahil Sagar, and I have the privilege of serving as this year's student body president. This year has truly ushered in a new era for Santa Clara University. In all aspects, the university is undergoing drastic changes that will keep Santa Clara competitive in the decades to come. In just this past year, our university leadership has seen the selection of a new president, Father O'Brien, and the new provost, Provost Lisa Kloppenberg, and is currently seeking two cabinet level positions. Our leadership is changing. The student population is diversifying with a nearly 50%, uh, with nearly 50% of the class of 2023, including students of color, adding to the vibrant student population that is already present. Charney and Finn Hall were recently completed and the athletics and and the Athletics Excellence Center and the Sobrato Campus for Discovery and Innovation has seen tremendous progress. The campus skyline is certainly changing. Academically, the Arts Department is modernizing its curriculum and is currently integrating modern technology and virtual reality into its physical pieces of art. I think it's safe to say that SCU is adapting to the demands of modern society and is, uh, or is adapting to the modern uh, demands of society now I'd like to take some time to share with you all the ways student life is currently changing. Our athletics teams and school spirit this year have been tremendous and are only getting better. Our SCU Division I teams have been extremely successful with all teams having had a winning record this fall and the success continuing into the winter. Attendance at basketball games is the highest it's been in years. And in an effort to promote school spirit and participation, the tradition of the Bronco Jacks was born to distract, the opposing, to distract the opposing team while shooting free throws. To further this spirit, student government and the activities programming board teamed up to get our school excited for the Gonzaga basketball game by hosting a pregame party and walked students from the party to the game with an actual pony. Her name was Poppy. She was great. As always, the student government continues to oversee clubs and their funding. Over the past years, ASG has had the privilege to uh, present to the University Budget Council and has graciously been awarded $90,000 to allocate to the student body. This money is invaluable as it promotes campus involvement and fosters a greater sense of belonging to the student body. SU ASG has also been passionate about serving students, but this year we were committed specifically to producing tangible results in a number of different capacities. Most notably, this year, SUHG has led the charge in participating in the Hyundai Challenge. ASG student leaders, staff, and faculty worked tirelessly for three weeks distributing marketing materials, constantly marketing to other students, and encouraging participation in the challenge. Through these efforts, Santa, the Santa Clara community beat both LMU and Pepperdine in, and received a $100,000 reward to put towards sustainability initiatives. The organization has also worked on a digital access card project for four years. And finally, this quarter, we began implementing it and we'll, there will be a full rollout for future orientations to come. Off-campus relations have been changing as well. It is unavoidable that no matter where they are in their college career, students will party. <laughs> At SCU, parties take place in the student-rented houses throughout the neighborhood. Over the past years, student government has heard countless complaints from neighbors 
and uh, from dismayed neighbors and students about the lack of accountability when it comes to throwing responsible parties. As a result, the community, the community development branch of ASG has continued to host educated party or training and promote safe, and promote safe uh, partying habits. Off-campus residents are presented with facts and figures uh, about the risks of alcohol consumption and legal violations associated with partying and are even given information to help mitigate risk and illegal activity. To further ensure student safety, ASG and the Office of Student Life has committed to working with off-campus Greek life organizations to host three Greek life summits this year. These summits increase communication with uh, in com increase communication and collaboration with off-campus organizations. This past fall, we hosted a substance misuse summit and are currently in the midst of organizing the mental health summit for this quarter. We will finish up this year by uh, Oh, we will finish up this year with a sexual assault and awareness summit in the spring. Speaking of mental health, the needs of young students and adults are drastically changing when it comes to mental health and wellness. Students across the nation are suffering from mental health issues, and the students at Santa Clara University are no different. We're experiencing extremely high levels of stress and anxiety, and stress, anxiety, and depression. The numbers of students requesting appointments with CAPS and our, uh, and our psychological services increase every single day. Um, while we recognize that this is a problem with the Santa Clara community, uh, we're, we're so excited to see the uh, community bo bound together to help support these students. The Office of Student Life, Cal Center, and CAPS are working extremely hard to fill these vacancies for psychology and therapist staff positions. The university has employed a number of different online and phone resources to help, uh, to help students receive treatment as fast as possible. But the real impetus comes with a group of students who possesses a true passion for helping students with mental health. The peer health educators, wellness center reps, Cowell ambassadors, Active Minds Club, SCU Mindfulness, and many other clubs on campus have devoted countless hours to helping students work through their difficult times. Although the university is slowly, slowly trying to address this problem, we as the students took charge and reacted quickly. It's truly inspiring to see this campus come together and show care and compassion for one another. I also want to recognize the countless students who work to make SU a better place for everyone. Credit, credit is owed to the Santa Clara newspaper for covering events near and far in the era of uh, journalistic turmoil and distrust of the media and for capturing our new president's inauguration. To KSCU for promoting the music scene at SCU and fostering a creative space for, uh, for students to produce, share, and talk about music. To the Multicultural Center, which provides a source of community and solidarity to hundreds of students on campus and is actively educating students about different cultures and backgrounds uh, through culture shows and programming. To the Santa Clara Community Action Program, SCAP, which provides a source for students to fulfill social, the social justice creed at the university. Engage in social activism on campus with Bronco Posse and advocacy for, camp, for workers on campus, and also engage off campus, uh, and also engage in off campus programming with San Jose and Santa Clara communities. Into the wild for constantly dreaming up bigger and bolder adventures while also providing the opportunities for all students to participate regardless of, uh, of financial situations. And to countless other chartered and registered student organizations and their leaders, credit is due as well. Santa Clara is a much better place because of the community that students cultivate and enrich. I also want to recognize the staff, faculty, and administrative members of our Santa Clara University community who believe in and work endlessly to further the mission of the institution uh, in my role, I have had the privilege to see their work and dedication. Not enough credit is due to the employed members of Santa Clara University who dedicate their lives to students, sacrificing time with members, uh, with family members, friends, in order to better our community. So many of you are mentors, friends, and confidants that make you const that constantly uh, allow you to make a difference to the students, without receiving nearly enough recognition. Specifically, with adjunct lectures as well, uh, not having uh, specifically with adjunct lectures as well, we recognize your work and commitment and do support you as much as we possibly can. In a special way, I thank all of you as well. Finally, I want to reflect on the state of the university. 
After all, that is what Father O'Brien is about to do for his very first time. I don't want to steal his thunder, but maybe a little bit. Uh, I've been amazed at how well the university is able to grow and adapt. I've been impressed that at the SU community's willingness to question decisions and voice their concerns on issues. Though the university and its stakeholders may have had its arguments and disputes, I'm blown away at how much everyone cares about this institution. Through it all, the university and the many people that comprise the community have endured. This community will continue to face challenges in the future as it does in the present and as it has throughout its 150 year past. This place will stand the many tests of time so long as the students, faculty, and administration keep the mission of Santa Clara as a central focus of our work. Father Brian, that's your challenge. This means we must listen to each other, think critically, work hard, and above all, act with compassion, conscience, and competence. This is the challenge of today and will continue to be the challenge of tomorrow. As, I've, as, as it has been said, I believe that the university is changing in all the right ways. This, I think, is the state of the university constantly changing as the community learns, struggles, and grows. It is my hope that this type of progress will continue long into the future. Thank you, and go Broncos. Thank you, Sahil, for those great remarks and your leadership on behalf of the student body. And now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our president, Kevin O'Brien of the Society of Jesus. After nearly eight months in office, we welcome Father O'Brien to the podium to deliver his first State of the University Address. Uh, Lisa, thank you for your uh, kind words. Uh, Saho, thank you for uh, your uh, really thoughtful and ref reflective uh, words reflecting your view of the state of the university. I know, uh, I think his parents and sister are here, so they are rightly proud of you. Where are you? Yeah, there you go. There he is. Uh, you, are, you should be proud of your son. I've really enjoyed uh, working with him this year. Um, and you can uh, vote uh, for uh, Sahil when he runs for governor in 2034. <laughs> so in my inaugural address, I propose an image of a Jesuit university as a place of generous encounter. And so before reviewing with you some particulars of the state of the university, I would like to further elaborate with you on that image so that we can ground what we are doing as a faculty, students, and staff in our particular mission at Santa Clara. For if we forget this broader horizon in which we teach, research, learn, and serve, we risk forgetting why we are doing what we are doing, thus reducing our laborers here to simply work and not to a vocation or a summons to greater purpose. Yet, so as not to bury the lead, let me say up front that the state of the university is strong in the face of some serious challenges. Strong above all because of the talent and generosity of the people who make up our family at Santa Clara. We are at our best when we make room for encounters that enliven and challenge, encounters that ignite the mind, stir the heart, and prod the feet and hands into action for the good of others. Encounter is a word rich in meaning. It means a conversation or a meeting that carries the possibility of unexpected revelation or adventurous discovery or of a surprising gift. To speak of such encounters as generous only deepens our image and I think challenges us. By generous, I mean an encounter that does not merely tolerate or respect another, but reverences them. To borrow a presupposition in St. Ignatius's spirituality, generosity means that we presume the goodwill of another and try to put a positive interpretation on another statement or action, and if we cannot, to correct them both in truth and in love. 
Generous encounter means that we can have difficult conversations because we are ready to do the hard work of forgiveness and reconciliation. In other words, we can be generous with one another as well as prophetic. Finally, generous encounter means that we are quick to encourage one another when we can because life can be hard and the times are challenging and the hidden burdens people carry can be very, very heavy. This university as a place of generous encounter is not a given. No matter the rankings, no matter the size of the endowments, no matter how old the tradition, we must be intentional and bold in our making Santa Clara such a place. So let me suggest two practices that can help us ferment a culture of generous encounter, both of which are steeped in the Ignatian tradition. So the first is gratitude. All of us are stewards of gifts freely given to us, such as knowledge generated by scholars of the past, works of art and music created by artists over the ages, land marked sacred by the Ohlone people, the spiritual and intellectual tradition of the Jesuits nearly 500 years old, and a campus and programs made possible by countless faculty, staff, students, and benefactors over the decades. These are all gifts. And recognizing that these are gifts, we naturally want to share those gifts to serve others. Because ideally, gratitude fuels generosity. The impact of an encounter, a generous encounter, thus multiplies. There's another practical benefit of cultivating an attitude of gratitude Anthony DeMello, a wise Indian Jesuit, succinctly put it, grateful people are happier people. Grateful people are happier people. Now, this is not trendy self-help, nor does the practice of gratitude gloss over problems of injustice. To the contrary, gratitude ought to fuel us to take on those challenges Because so grateful are we for this world, this planet, this discipline, this campus, this person before us, we want only to make things better. Gratitude can thus transform us in how we look at one another and our shared labor at this university. The second practice that helps us ferment a culture of generous encounter is attentiveness. The philosopher Simone Weil provocatively observed, attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. Provocative indeed, because in her time, and even more so in our own, it is hard to really pay attention. Given the information overload that we all face, given our hectic schedules, and the always present distraction of screens. Paying attention, that is, looking, listening, reflecting, sensing, and feeling deeply, helps us avoid the trap that T.S. Eliot warned against in his four quartets, to have the experience but miss the meaning. And Jesuit education ultimately is about meaning-making. It is indeed easy to go for the quick fix. It is easy to regurgitate the expert opinion or popular consensus. It is easy to categorize people. But if we really pay attention, then the person before us has the possibility of becoming our teacher and our friend. If we really look and listen deeply, the most ordinary encounter can be extraordinary. Superficiality is so seductive because it means we don't have to change. But attentiveness, attentiveness might just summon us to address a problem or an injustice because we notice that once hidden burden that another carries. It might just inspire us to reach out to someone who is very lonely. It might just call us to let go of old ways of doing things and seeing things 
and even to let go of comfortable ways of living and learning, teaching and relating in order to embrace a whole new outlook that can liberate us beyond our imagining now. So trying to practice attentiveness and gratitude, I realize how blessed I am, how blessed I have been with some very meaningful encounters over these last seven or eight months. So let me share with you just a few examples. So as I was invited to two classes. I'm welcome to attend, I'm, I'm welcome, you're welcome to invite me to attend more. But those two classes, which I really enjoyed, Barbara Burns's Intro to Catholic, Intro to Child Studies, and then Chip Adams' Conscientious Capitalism course. And they're just sitting in their class, I realized and saw professors passionate about their subjects and connecting to both the minds and the hearts of their students in different ways. In the fall, I saw so many faculty, staff, and students respond when Jake and Gelkin was hit by a car. The lacrosse team arranged for a Thanksgiving dinner for his family, who we arranged to stay on campus. And I remember visiting the ICU one day to find Jake wrapped in a red Santa Clara blanket that Matthew Duncan had given him. At two forums so far, I've joined conversations about race and diversity that were challenging and sometimes difficult. Conversations in which I saw Broncos listen and learn and try to find ways to work together in the shared conviction that we can be better. On my walks across campus, I see our gardeners so carefully, even reverently, pruning back the rose bushes, which is hard to see. But they assure me that they will be back by April. <laughs> I was overpowered by the closing song of Rhiannon Giddens' fall concert. Now, Rhiannon is the Sinatra artist in residence. Her song was a sweet lullaby, a psalm, a lyrical prayer for grace in challenging times. I was equally overpowered in a visual sense by Ken Gonzalez Day's images of California lynching trees exhibited in the gallery in the Dowd Building. I've met so many alumni, alumni around the, uh, along the road and heard their stories of how they put their Santa Clara education into the service of others. One day, Fred Ferrer, an alumnus and a teacher here, drove me around East San Jose to introduce me to people who are trying to make their, com their community better. And at a, at a stop at the courthouse, an alumna of our law school proudly told me about her work serving as a child advocate in family court every day. And I've joined students in their residence halls and at performances and even on a KSU radio show. You can find it online. I've noticed that in their contagious enthusiasm, generous encounters can also be a lot of fun. They've welcomed me into their home here this newcomer. One team asked me to pray with them before a game. A group of students invited me to lead Bronco Jacks at a basketball game, for which my back is still paying. A student group invited me to, to deliver food with them on a Friday night in St. James Park. And for one who has no children of my own, I'm amazed by the number of students who walk by or skateboard by me every day and just say, hey, Father. <laughs> now, there are so many examples here to share, but I hope these few examples demonstrate how the practice of attention, attention and gratitude can enrich our life here. Noticing the details and reflecting on them gratefully will ensure that we have the experience without missing the meaning. I'm convinced that a culture of generous encounter will allow each of us to do our best work and find even more fulfillment in our labors and more powerfully serve the common good. In this way, Santa Clara can be an example of generous encounter in a country, in a culture that too often lacks both generosity and authentic encounter, but not so here not in this place. I love being here, I want to tell you. That's the state of my soul. I love this remarkable position of service because of the people I work with and the students I'm getting to know and the mission that is so vital 
and the impact we can all have together. So thank you for listening to my preamble. I now want to offer you some more specific updates, having set that frame into context, about what's been happening uh, over the last seven or eight months. So we'll begin with uh, academics. So uh, two very important and telling statistics. Uh, the first is our six-year graduation rate, which is the highest ever, and a national leader. <laughs> Equally important is that second statistic, 94.1%. That's our retention rate from the first to the second year. That's a national leader. It shows us that what we are offering our students matters and is meaningful, and we do it well. We can always do better, but that should be encouraged to all of us in the classroom and outside the classroom. Our rankings reflect it. Now, we shared with you in the fall um, our rankings in the U.S. News and the the, our first appearance in the national rankings at 54 among all national universities, 54 of 399. But lost there, I think, in that news was this statistic from U.S. News. Number 23 in undergrad teaching. It says a lot about who we are. And other rankings followed over the course of the year from the Wall Street Journal and rankings for our business school all which indicate that we are doing well. But as I've said before, if we remain faithful to who we are, the rankings will follow, and they have, I think. All this is possible because of the faculty who along with our staff, are the core of, of who we are every day. And so in the fall, we welcomed a number of new faculty, as indicated here. And we are currently recruiting for next year, searching for 21 tenure-track faculty and six renewable term lecturers. And I just want to thank all those many faculty members who are on search committees, which are very time-consuming, but so, so important. So, I think my first hire was a win. <laughs> we had an exceptional pool of candidates for this position. Now, it's hard to, to run for a position as an interim, and Lisa did that so gracefully. Um, but it was a, the, the national search yielded many fine candidates who wanted to come here. And Lisa rose to the top proudly. She then will now have the opportunity to hire <laughs> <laughs> deans. So she's already done one. So the Jesuit School of Theology, uh, she appointed uh, Joe Mueller, a Jesuit from Marquette University, who will uh, uh, succeed Allison Benders there in Berkeley at her North Campus. Um, Joe will begin his work as dean of the Jesuit School of Theology in July. As we know, Thane Kreiner is uh, uh, leaving the Miller Center after many years of service. So we are currently searching for the executive director of the Miller Center. Uh, the dean search in the College of Arts and Sciences is reaching the finalist stage. We'll have finalist candidates coming to campus in March, and it is a, an impressive pool. I made sure that the semifinalists got to meet Lisa on their airport interviews. And uh, Lisa and I are working on uh, how to proceed with the appointment of uh, the Dean of the School of Law, in which uh, Anna Hahn has served so well as interim. We announced last month that after uh, over a decade of great service to, uh, to Santa Clara, um, Mike Sexton will be stepping down as Vice President for Enrollment Management, and we, and we announced uh, there would be a national search for that position, so important to us. It's a cabinet-level position. But I also want to announce two new leadership positions, which uh, the Board of Trustees formally approved on Friday. Um, these, both of these positions reflect the feedback that we received over the course of the last several years as important uh, to create uh, at our university. So, the first is the Vice Presidency, the Vice President for Diversity, Inclusion, and Community Engagement. Um, currently, uh, we have uh, uh, Margaret Russell serving as the Associate Provost for Diversity and Inclusion, 
this position will replace that position in the provost's office and become a cabinet level position reporting directly to me. We thought it very important that a position focusing on diversity, inclusion, and campus culture um, think uh, very broadly uh, uh, across the university and be serving on the cabinet. And so that search is underway. Our search consulting firm uh, has interviewed or met with over 30 groups of students, faculty, and staff over the last several weeks. And I'm grateful for Eva Blanco Macias for um, uh, chairing that search. So that will begin, that has begun in earnest. The second position, uh, which the board approved, is a vice president for mission and ministry. Um, 18 other Jesuit universities have a similar role. We, we don't. And so now I think it's time to, to, to adopt this best practice for us. Um, we received this recommendation from the mission priority examine self-study and the visiting team suggested such a position on the cabinet, which in a very similar way to the vice president for diversity, equity, and community engagement would help the university, all parts of the university, focus on what it means to be at a Catholic and Jesuit university in our context. This position will replace the executive director of the Ignatian Center. And there'll be some reorganization to make sure that campus ministry and the Ignatian Center and the Mission Church continue to thrive under this new vice president. So there'll be more about this position uh, when I more formally announce it uh, in writing uh, later this week or early next. But it's very important, as I, as I mentioned, these two positions that everyone, not just two cabinet level officers, but everyone at the university has a role, in fact, a duty to promote diversity and inclusion and promote our mission as a Jesuit university. These two individuals will help us understand how we can each of us best do that. So I'm excited about uh, these two new, two, new, two new leadership positions, which will help us be a better university. All this is part of our priority of building a culture of greater trust and transparency on campus. And so Lisa and I, over the last seven or eight months, have visited a lot of you in your offices, and we've had town halls, and. Um, engaged in different ways. We made some uh, very concrete reforms. We now have faculty observers on the Board of Trustees Academic Affairs Committee, which I think is important. For the first time, we had the Staff Senate President uh, report to the Board of Trustees on Friday, and that practice will continue, joining the, the President of the Faculty Senate and the ASG President, who have, all, who have also traditionally given uh, those reports to the Board. And Lisa, as you know, has... Uh, started two new advisory committees to help her do her work. And this is something that came from the students, a, a buddy program. So uh, they wisely, Sahil and his counterparts, wisely acknowledged that um, instead of waiting for a town hall meeting or a forum, that we have ongoing communication between student leaders and administrators. So both the Associated Student Government and the Student Council on Inclusive Excellence have paired their leadership with members of the cabinet primarily who will meet regularly to discuss issues as they come up so that we can be more reflective than just simply reactive. As Saho said, uh, mental health is a primary concern, and I want to assure you that nothing is more important uh, to me and our leadership team than the, the well-being of our students. Um, we understand the challenges that we have faced uh, in the Cowell Center, and so I want to indicate some very concrete measures that we have taken uh, uh, recently to address the needs of our students as they seek mental health care in the Cal Center. The first, in a very competitive um, environment in which there is a shortage of psychologists in the Bay Area, including, for instance, at Stanford, we've increased the starting salaries currently to, to help recruit candidates to those positions. Currently, we have... Um, about four positions open in Cowell, and we hope a higher starting salary will lure more applicants. We have recently contracted with an outside agency to assist us in the interim to meet student demand. That outside agency will provide uh, uh, persons offering counseling services to us as we fill these uh, permanent positions. We are currently interviewing for an outreach coordinator, which would be placed at the Cal Center. Uh, and that outreach coordinator will be focused on engaging students 
as they um, express their uh, mental health or emotional health needs. Uh, our, we are highlighting an option for students in, who have our university health insurance, which is virtual counseling, which some students have found um, uh, easier at first to engage someone uh, virtually uh, online uh, uh, before meeting with a, a counselor face to face. So that is an, another option that some students have. And we are currently exploring extending uh, hours for CAPS. Um, know that we have heard your concern, we're on it, we're working to get better, and we'll be communicating more about these initiatives and others in the weeks ahead. You know, even before I arrived, that we as a campus made a commitment to being a JED campus, that is a campus which is committed to having essentially a, a gigantic network or net of support for our students for their well-being. And so some very small but I think very important things that, that indicate that commitment, free fitness classes for our students. We have uh, first year and transfer students who were trained in QPR, which many of our staff and faculty have done. Uh, that's training that would help them identify students in particular crisis or need. Residence life is um, exper experimenting with different ways of engaging students beyond just programs, but asking communi community facilitators or CFs to engage students one-on-one -on -one to combat some of the, the, um, the expressions of loneliness that we have heard articulated among our students. And a big thank you to many of our faculty and staff who have supported our Bronco Pantry. Uh, thus far, 85 students have utilized the Bronco Pantry. So I'm very grateful for uh, the donations of our alumni and even those here for supporting the Bronco Pantry. A health concern which has made uh, local and national news of late is the coronavirus. We've been communicating regularly with you and with parents who are concerned about their students, their sons and daughters. There have been no cases on, on our Santa Clara campuses. Um, but we are working closely with the Santa Clara Public Health Department to get any updates uh, that we need to respond to, um, to the care of, to respond as well as we can to the care of our students, for the care of our students. And just a reminder that influenza continues to be a challenge any year, including this year, just regular flu. And you are welcome. I encourage you to get your flu shot from Bucky. Uh, you can still, he's very gentle. Uh, you can, you can get your flu shot uh, at Cowell still, and it's effective for battling the, the common influenza or common flu. Gratitude to all of you. All of us are engaged in the conversion of Workday. We successfully, Bob Owen and his team, converted our uh, HR systems. We are now, as you know, uh, working on our financial systems conversion, and then student um, uh, systems will be after that. So we're in the midst of, of doing that. Thank you for all of your hard work. Um, we are very sensitive and are making investments now to ensure that our infrastructure, our cybersecurity infrastructure is up to date. We are making investments now to ensure that as best as we can, that we are not victimized by a ransomware attack. Uh, Regis University in Denver was hit with such an attack in August and they're still recovering. We wanna try to, to do what we can now to prevent such an attack in the future. Local governments and uh, not-for-profits and, and uh, businesses have faced such uh, attacks, and so we are on that. And I'm grateful to Bob and his team. Last Friday at the board meeting, our, our board approved uh, our budget for next year, so I want to go over sort of the highlights of that budget. But Michael Crowley will host a uh, budget forum in the first week of March to dive deeper, but in the interest of transparency, since the budget was approved, I want to share with you, share with you now. The tuition increase next year will be 3.57%, so 3.75% next year. That's the same increase as a year before. Many of our peers have increased at four or higher, and we thought it very important to, though it is still a tuition increase, that we hold the increase to what it was last year. So it is the same increase as last year, 3.75%. At the same time, we are increasing financial aid. Uh, the undergrad, undergrad financial aid next year will be about 102 million, and the graduate financial aid next year will be just uh, 15 and a half million or so. Um, both are increases from the year before. 
that basically is about 20% of our operated, operating budget that is devoted to financial aid. We also uh, approved a 3% merit pool for our faculty and staff. That is the same merit pool as last year. It was important for us to try to hold that at 3% to acknowledge the, the good work of our faculty and staff, um, and also acknowledging what I have said frequently, the, the challenge of affordability in this area. We have also provided funds for faculty promotion. Um, and faculty and staff equity adjustments and salary as needed, as well as increased investments in, investments in mental health. In order for us to uh, help fund uh, financial aid and other priorities, we are looking at a 3% cost savings in our operating expenses across the unit. So we're gonna leave every unit, we're gonna leave it up to every unit to decide where to find 3% of savings out of their operating budget, and that will just amount to about $1.4 million across the university. That's one way that we help fund these other priorities in financial aid and mental health. So I'm grateful to our, our University uh, Budget Council who helped develop these recommendations and, and, and offer them to Michael Crowley and the administration and our board. Thank you for your hard work. I also realize that a lot of you have recommended um, or asked for additions, something new to the budget or additional uh, funds for a current uh, uh, budget priority you have. I realize that we were not able to fund everything. And so we tried to uh, prioritize as best we can. So more on that in the first week of March. Admissions, uh, good news on admissions. We have the largest admissions uh, application pool uh, ever, uh, 16,462. That's a 1% increase from last year in a very competitive, competitive environment. Early decision applications were up over 25%, which is particularly good news for us. People want to come here and they want to, they want to commit here early. In fact, uh, essentially about 25% of our incoming class of about 1,450 um, have committed to Santa Clara which is ahead of, 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 of how we've normally filled a class in prior years. So again, thanks to, to Eva and to Mike and their teams for all their hard work there. Um, if you're waiting on a decision for a son or daughter, mid-March is when you will hear um, the results of the regular pool. Alumni engagement, uh, one of the joys of uh, engaging uh, that I have in this job is to engage our, our alumni community of nearly 100,000 alumni all around the world um, I've been, uh, I haven't gone to 90, 98 events in 31 cities. That 90, those events are, are held by our uh, uh, alumni association and university relations, and we have deans and others uh, who are going out to meet our alumni. Uh, we have more events coming up. We're holding a series of Meet the President events. Uh, we've begun on the West, and we'll, in March we'll go to the East Coast and Midwest in April, and then eventually to Asia in the summer and early fall. So I'm trying to meet our alumni community as best, as best we can. Um, and we had a great reunion last fall. We anticipate another one. Enth enthusiasm is very high, you should know, among our alumni community for all the good things happening on campus. They want to remain connected. We have high alumni engagement, and that bodes well, again, for what we're doing for our students as they are students. I'm trying to reach out to them in creative, creative ways. So if you haven't, you're welcome to meet me online at Kevin O'Brien SJ on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. <laughs> Kevin O'Brien, SJ. Okay. Uh, our campaign uh, marches along $654 million. It's actually a little higher now uh, to a $1 billion goal. The good news there is nearly $120 million of that is financial aid with a goal of $180 million uh, for financial aid or scholarships. Uh, I'm very grateful to our university relations team who every day is trying to advance Santa Clara. Part of that, of course, are the buildings. The Sobrato Campus for Innovation, uh, for Discovery and Innovation um, is moving along uh, on time and under budget, which is great news for a president to hear. Um, and so too, the Schott uh, Athletic Excellence Center, that's progressing. The Sobrato Campus hopefully will be finished uh, a year from 
this uh, September and then uh, shot the Athletic Excellence Center is on schedule to open in August, September of this year. Um, kudos to our, our fall sports, all of whom had a winning record. Way to go. And, uh, and our uh, uh, women's soccer ranked 14th in the nation, continuing in that great progress. Currently, our basketball team is, uh, is approaching 20 wins, and that's, that's great progress for our basketball program. So come and see the Broncos. But in the end, uh, buildings are great, and we have a beautiful campus, and the roses will come back. <laughs> but, um, but it's the people, of course, in the buildings that matter. Uh, and so um, it all comes back to people, particularly for our students. That's why our faculty and staff are here. Uh, we have great students whom we want to invest in and, uh, and care for and do that in the best way we possibly can as a university. Um, because that is, in the end, how we will be measured as a university, in who our students become. And by those measures, we are doing, we are doing just fine and will continue to do better. I've been visiting with our students again in a lot of different places and our faculty and staff in a lot of different places. But I want to share with you um, one of my special visits. Uh, it was to kids on campus. Now, we've all seen them sort of come through campus in their little line, <laughs> in their little, you know, carts and everything. Um, we remember the Halloween parade. Um, but I had such a special morning there. I saw such dedicating, passionate staff. I saw many of our staff and a few of our faculty come over and visit their students in, uh, in Kids on Campus in the shark room or the turtle room. But this is on every wall. We are kind. We listen to each other. And everyone can play. We are kind. We listen to each other and everyone can play. That's the motto of kids on campus. Frankly, it's not a bad motto for all of us older people at Santa Clara. So I close with gratitude and uh, maybe a, a call for all of us uh, to follow the lead of our kids on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Father O'Brien. Before we close the State of the University event, I wish to thank all of you again for joining us today. And we will conclude by inviting the chamber singers to perform the alma mater. Thank you again. Santa Clara.